Over to you, Parish sir. We are live. Hello and welcome to another episode of In Conversation with. In Conversation with is a series by Cassie Global New York, where we invite senior leaders from the management fraternity, and we try and understand, try and grasp executable advice. While the core of Cassie is sustainability and CSR. we believe that one of the key pillars to sustainability is entrepreneurship hence today's session on entrepreneurship so my name is paresh and i am a member of the board of directors at cassie new york we also run a large volunteering platform probably the world's largest volunteering platform with over 3 million volunteers in india alone now let me start with a question uh, before we go on to our chief guest for the day um and um, i i would request a short answer a 30 second 40 second 1 minute answer from any of the guests uh, uh present today so um the question is because of technology and internet every known business or process is being reinvented or disrupted there are no more geographical boundaries while it has been never easier to create new businesses or new business models the entire process of value capturing and value creation has changed so it is a evolving process the value capturing and the value creation in such a scenario how does an entrepreneur remain relevant how do you become relevant how do you stay relevant so anyone yes sumit ji please yeah hi yeah yeah please so uh, the good thing about the current situation is that you know we are all in the same club and we are uh, having a common platform to you know run our businesses and so on and so forth but in order to relevant uh, be relevant i believe that a person an entrepreneur should activate his lateral thinking skills and you know try to uh, you know do problem solving by doing uh, by involving out of the box for very uh, critical areas in any business or in any opportunity so i think a person can be relevant and stand out and maybe excel uh, in that fashion try something which nobody has ever done something like that okay anyone else wants to take the question let me go Please on to part 2 of my question Yeah, yeah. Please, please. No, no, no. I just, I just wanted to quickly say that um, if I apply what has happened in that scenario, there's been actually an explosion of the entrepreneurial activity in Trinidad. Um, mm -hmm. um, ironically, driven by the restrictions and 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 you know all the things surrounding COVID nineteen, very strong cultural base um, uh, in. Payment and so on, and there's been a tremendous amount of innovation in that area. Um, to 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 take the the point previously made, um, in this, uh, out of adversity has come tremendous, I think, creativity and and um, entrepreneurship, certainly in our environment. Okay. correct absolutely uh let me go to part 2 of my question before we go to hiran mai ji um and pratiksha ji you are uh, welcome to answer this um uh, you know or uh, one of the speakers can also answer this so the part 2 of the question is what is the support system we have or our building to ensure our entrepreneurs stay relevant uh so mr paresh you want me to take that uh, Uh, yeah so uh, i think uh, in continuation to what you spoke previously uh, in the current era i think whatever is the adversities we are facing in terms of the global pandemic is working more in favor of entrepreneurs than in favor of people who are job oriented the situation is that we as entrepreneurs have to innovate we have to think out of the box like few of my colleagues over here have mentioned but we have to also have the aptitude of converting adversities into advantages so i think with this pandemic and uh, the situations that this pandemic has created by paralyzing us in terms of movement or in terms of activities has given us a scope to actually sit down and really think and innovate and find out ways either destructive or constructive 
to really take things to the next level in terms of entrepreneurship. Coming to what you have mentioned in terms of whether we have an ecosystem or do we have a, a system where uh, it's conducive for entrepreneurs to really flourish, uh, we're still talking to uh, the Indian scenario. I would say uh, not only Indian, but globally, it's very difficult for any entrepreneurship to really find the right kind of ecosystem and to develop a product, take it right up to the process and the marketing level. I think the only thing that really matters and uh, and then obviously your networking skills, your uh, aptitude to collaborate and uh, uh, you know tie up with like-minded people or with facilities uh, uh, or infrastructural support wherever you require your openness, your willingness to uh, you know, um, really uh, share ideas, thoughts, and concepts, and move ahead. Uh, there is no right ecosystem. You have to create an ecosystem for yourself. You have to go out and you have to go and meet people who are of the same thought process, who are same enthusiasm level, and find out what is it that they have that you don't have. Share your resources, work out, and uh, move ahead in a very constructive way, in a stepwise way, in a in a very methodical way uh, to become a successful entrepreneur. So I think... Um, Thank you, Pratik Kaji, with that yeah. background yeah. of uh, issues for the entrepreneurs and uh, the ecosystem. Uh, let's welcome our chief guest for the day, Hiranmay Mahantaji. Uh, Hiranmay Ji, Gujarat government, he manages uh, the Gujarat Startup Innovation Hub for the government of Gujarat. Uh, Hiranmay Ji, thank you very much for joining us. Please tell us your angle. Thank you so much, uh, Parezji, Sumitji, Rohiniji, Hayden, uh, and Pratiksha, all of you. Uh, it's a great privilege to have you uh, today and learn from you. Uh, I'm so sorry, my, my my platform is supporting either of your videos, so I'm just taking one video off. Uh, but anyway, it's a great learning platform. Amar is here. Amar used to be my junior in the college. Great to see you, Amar. Uh, I will briefly tell what exactly we are doing in the state of Gujarat. Uh, Gujarat, uh, as you know, many of you, uh, uh, is an entrepreneurial state. But then, uh, in, in the National Innovation, we, why not we look into what we are doing and where we should go ahead. And for next two to three excellence in uh, technology and different things. And that not only needs uh, the structural change in the infrastructure process, also it needs a lot of cultural mindset changes. That's why uh, the state of government of Gujarat came forward and thought, why not we design um, a technology startup policy and build something so that the young generation uh, they can also create some jobs while they are quite young. And therein, they are in create values. The second pillar is once we build, we also need incentives, an incentive for all stakeholders, not only the entrepreneur, even the parents of the entrepreneur need incentive. They need moral support, they need social security, they need a positive uh, uh, feel factor, right? So, non-financial, but yeah, major feel all about the infrastructure because once the entrepreneurs start growing you need to build infrastructure for them so incentive institutional framework and institutional building and then incentive these are the three eyes that we clearly focused upon and then we figured out how do we move ahead so if rather than any specific ministry looking into the innovation entrepreneurship in the state we decided how about every ministry having an entrepreneurship pursuits within their ambit. So for the example, the Rural Development Ministry can think about how can entrepreneurs who are trying to solve problem of rural India can closely work with them. The Ministry of Transportation looking about how can the urban transportation can be better solved by co-creation with startups working in this domain. So that was the idea that rather than looking into 
it's a government project. We thought, how do we imbibe within the system? So what we do actually, we look for young people across universities in the state of Gujarat. We have 80 universities and we produce 2 million kids every year. And interestingly, we realized that many of these kids are not very able to go for a corporate job. They're already in a hazardness of going into that placement office, but they want to build something of their own. So what we do in the state, and therein IHUB plays a very vital role. We scout around 1,000 kids uh, in the graduation or post-graduation college. We ask them to submit their ideas, what they want to pursue for next two years, and we give them some free money of two to five lakhs rupees of Indian rupees. And we say that, take this money, come back to us after 100 days with a proof of concepts. And, and after day teams that we give this money the around 800 of teams come back to us generally 200 dropouts 700 800 teams comes to us he says okay now we have built a proof of concept now please give us some more money we want to build a product then we give them around 10 to 30 lakhs indian rupees to build a complete product and out of them also around 50 percent come back to us after next 100 days and they say Ki boss, now we are built, we are ready with the product. Now we want to build a company. Can you help us to get some incubation space? Can you help us to access to some infrastructure? There in our uh, the massive incubation ecosystem that we have created that comes in handy. At the end of this cycle of 12 months, we have around 200 young people across universities who doesn't want to go to jobs, but they already are creating jobs. And these 200 companies which comes out of their different university programs are the pipeline of their startup ecosystem in the state of Gujarat. And I'll be happy to tell you that out of these 200 companies that we get in next 24 months, they create an annual average revenue of a million dollar Indian rupees. That's something is a wow factor for us because we realize that these young kids otherwise could have been gone to an IT consulting company and doing something which may or may not be lovable to them. But now they really love doing what they are and that actually changes the culture of our academic system, our research culture. And honestly speaking, 80% of them come from rural Gujarat. They are not from the capital city. They are not to come from the four urban locations like Surat, Ahmedabad, Rajkot. 80% of them come from Tier 3, Tier 4 districts. So that gives us an understanding that there is more hunger among the youth in the, in the rural or semi-urban segment. Only thing is they don't get a platform. They don't get financial support. They don't get mentorship. And I think that that's the, that's the place that we want to address. And what we have done to sustain this process, we have built this massive infrastructure called Gujarat Innovation Hub, IHUB. We have a capacity to house 5,000 innovators at a time across domain. Name it a sector, we have the facility for that. And one of the advantages that we have is because we also fund every university to set up innovation center. So any innovator, any startup has any need in the early stage uh, it's just a call away. So they can access to all those modern structure, may it be supercomputing, may it be the genomics lab. So we don't need to create every facility or every infrastructure from the uh, scratch. We have that knowledge network ready. What we are trying to do, and this is what we are trying to address. Typically in Indian cities, a startup take more than 1,000 days to create a million dollar value in the early stage of their incorporation. I'm not talking about those typical digital companies who actually go faster. We are talking about con companies who are actually focusing on doing revenue and profit in the day one. So what we are doing is we are creating a support system in the state. We bring in all the leading industry chambers. We have at least 1,000 companies in Gujarat who makes more than 100 crore revenue, sorry, 100 crore profit every year. We bring in those companies and, and ask them, can you work with the startups who are of your interest, of your domain? And we bring around five to six startups cohort to each of them. And that has been a fabulous interface. So we have been pioneering the interface between industry startup co-creation. And therein, these existing companies who are already into a massive supply chain, massive profitability, they are handholding these companies, early stage company who are hardly half a million dollar revenue. So this interface has created a long, long uh, support value chain. One more thing that we are doing in the government, and this is something that we realize, that rather than creating a 10,000 crore fund, can we create a 10,000 crore market? Because if I say about Gujarat in the, in the, in the statistical domain, we have an annual budget of around 90,000 crore. 
And out of 90,000 crore, around 30,000 crore is public procurement through various ministries, various departments, and various schemes of government. We realize that if we can liberally open the public procurement of government to all these young startups, that itself can create a 10,000 crore market only in the state of Gujarat. Only thing is what we need to do is, obviously we cannot ask these young startups for going into tendering and bidding. They can't show you a five-year revenue seat. Obviously they will not fit and they will not be the outlier competing with the existing technology companies. Uh, for the example, the smart cities, we have five smart cities. Each of them get a 300 crore market share. Obviously, the bigger corporations will find it easy to go for a bidding and a tender and work with them. But then these young startups who are innovating in IoT embedded system, they might not get a chance to work with these companies and also the early revenue will be a challenge. So what we are doing here is we are, we are bending our procurement policies. So therein what we are doing in the government is we are changing the policy paradigm so that without going for the L1 or which is called the technical way, the lowest bid, if you are a startup and if you are, if you are recognized, and if you are doing an innovative product, you can still get a preference for supplying your product and services to government without going through L1. So what we're trying to do is rather than pushing them by giving them financial capital, we are pooling them to create a market for them because then they're not only also are creating the access for revenue, uh, in the early days to survive, but also validate their product and services. So technically what we are trying to do is we are trying to create platforms to help passionate people to create products and services. And also through agile policy and very compassionate policy, we are trying to ensure that these products and services get access to market. And we will be happy to know all the honorable ministers of different departments, honorable bureaucrats of different departments, are mentoring around 100 startups in the state of Gujarat. And when a secretary transport is mentoring five startups working in the transportation sector, none other than uh, a better opportunity could have been created like this. So mentorship is something that we are focusing. Capital, at least this capital, we have strongly addressed. Obviously, the latter stage capital, we are struggling. We are yet to learn how to solve that. But yes, we are, we are keen to solve that problem also. And we are seriously believing that domestic consumption could be, a, would be a big, big support system for local startups. So these are certain things that we are doing and uh, we'll be happy to learn from Cassie and, and all of your entrepreneurial uh, pursuit and uh, understanding by now. And any any suggestions and, and inputs would be more than welcome for what we are doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Parisi, for giving an opportunity. Uh, Mahantaji, that, that was, uh, you know, that was an eye opener for many of our audiences. Uh, this will go to all our students. Uh, while I have personally been um, involved in Gujarat and we are trying to do something bigger in Gujarat, um, you know, we, we had a discussion last time we spoke. Um, so Bupendra Singh Chudasma sir was uh, very impressed with the business model that we had promoted or presented uh, to the government of Gujarat. Uh, we are trying to um, inculcate uh, half a million entrepreneurs. Uh, we are trying to promote half a million entrepreneurs and um, Chudasmaji was very happy with that. Unfortunately, because of this COVID, um, we, we are in waiting for the last 15 months. Um, otherwise, I, I completely agree. And, um, you know, it's an amazing model which you guys have created. Um, so tell me something, um, Mahantaji. Uh, yes, one question I would like um, to ask you, um, you know, on behalf of the audiences. Uh, we, we Globally, Everybody loves platforms, you know, so um, Amar will like platforms and uh, even I as an investor like platforms. Everybody has this craze about platforms uh, right after Zuckerberg became a billionaire, you know, so uh, every every private equity and his uncle uh, wants to invest in platforms. Uh, how come you are going the trade way, the business way? So one thing crazy uh, that we realized is, you know, and this is what I will say that all ecosystems are different. And if Silicon Valley could have been the only way, then United States could have been replicated in other states also, right? So what is what we need to look at when you build ecosystem is what works in your socio-cultural and geographical context. And when we looked into our economy here, we realized that the entrepreneurs here are not only looking for their Excel sheet growth in terms of customer acquisition, but they're also looking at profitability and unit economics. And most of these young startups that we support here, we realize that these guys are okay with a 10% profit in the first five years rather than going for a 10x customer acquisition. And that is something was very interesting because as I told that as a policymaker, 
we don't we don't make any strategy without talking to the customers of the policy so i personally an honorable minister himself the secretary and the commissioner themselves interacted with few hundred entrepreneurs a young entrepreneurs uh, particularly and then we try to understand the pulse what they want to pursue and then we realize this okay if somebody is creating a platform it's fine typically speaking it is the venture world which drives indian entrepreneurs to go wise towards particular direction but then we figured out and this is what i would told you there are 100 company doing more than 100 crore profit is not a small game and they have already successful following the local model of ecosystem right so what we thought is rather than copy pasting what global phenomena has happened we thought what could be our dna you know and then we figured out that you know our dna is a little bit different from what probably a silicon valley dna is and then we then then we then we talked to the entrepreneur and then they told can you help us to go through the death valley first entrepreneur never asked us much more than that they told us that boss would you help us to survive the fast million dollar check for us as a consumer in anywhere in the market we have a beautiful product we have tested it out but we don't know how to sell how to go forward and without having that vitamin a we can't survive it despite you having a beautiful product right so our idea was can we ensure that the innovators validate the product and if possible extend that product validation into market creation however small it may be and once they validate this two step in next 18 months then we figure out how we can take it forward so honestly speaking we are not very clever cast yet to look for unique i mean we are not desperate to create 10 unicorns from gujarat but we are excited to create 1000 companies who will be doing a 50 crore revenue correct correct absolutely and um, this pretty much um, you know frames our discussion with your cabinet minister also so that that is what we were trying to promote in half a million entrepreneurs in gujarat uh, we were trying to establish uh, trade and arbitrage uh, opportunities you know between states uh, so that the children can gujarat can uh, get into arbitrage and trading opportunities so the next imminent question um, you know mahanta ji would be um, are you uh, partial to students of gujarat or would you also uh, be keen to help uh, uh, students from elsewhere oh i mean i mean i mean what happened is you know when i was drafting this policy as a co author i never i realized that you know we'll be able to hit the bullseye but within two years we got requests from maharashtra and others and as an enabler we we do we will never love to have these boundaries geographical mental psychological whatever so i also co-wrote that the policy for the maharashtra government but then one thing i realized is uh, you know policies and incentives are only 10% how do we execute these mandates are really really game yeah. and and i tell you the secret sirs first time within the government system in gujarat it's not officers in the cadres who run these policies these are entrepreneurs uh, in the system comes in for a sabbatical for a couple of years they come and run this policy implementation part so when a person who was gone through the challenge he was seen the challenge when he comes to help others to taking public support they actually do a marvelous job so i think uh, other states are also doing it's not that other states are not doing central government is also doing but the real challenge is how do we sense the pulse of the needy entrepreneurs and take help at the point of need if you give money once they dead there is no point of putting sprinkling those resources there right so how do you how do you take support at the point of need and point of care and also as i tell as, as i told you that you know the way we can take this ecos and one more thing that we did uh, mr seth is we never got biased to only one sector or two sector anybody and everybody who is innovative was welcome they could be from nanotechnology that could be from space sciences and everybody used to ask us how could you guys could be expert of everything else and our friend was very simple we are actually opd guys we don't know we are not the expert but we know who is the expert and pulling in an expert is not a very complex thing in india we have huge talent huge expertise you know csir has 5000 scientists retiring after 30 years of experience they are all sitting with their grandkids you know they know what technology works what not works only thing is you need to create a system which can leverage this knowledge sitting idle somewhere else or suboptimally used and channelize them for your entrepreneur so and one thing that parish ji we are doing is you know every time uh, you know people build institution and support system they think of one year two year or max to max five year copying the russian model of five year plan once we decide i i, I remember chudas maji our shiksha mantri education minister when he designed this policy he told me think for 50 years 
even if we are there or not. The system must gradually evolve, organically evolve with every five year and system has to take root. And that's what, we have a very, very long-term plan. And one of the reasons why we look for all, uh, something between 25 to 35 year young people in the start with is because we are there with them for next a decade, at least two decades. So we are there in the journey. We want to be a co-traveler in the entire process. And that has been quite phenomenal. So having a long-term view, very grounded approach, and an agile way of bringing people beyond government servants to run the mission has been a quite uh, secret sauce. Uh, thank you very much, Mahantaji. And um, you know, thank you again for uh, joining us. Um, for the sake of the audience, I would like to say that Mahantaji uh, was um, infected with corona and his family was infected with corona and uh, this still took out time. So uh, we, are, we are really thankful to you, Mahantaji. You know, thank, thank you, you thank for you being so here. much, sir. Uh, thank you so much. I would be more than happy to any uh, question sometime, but looking at the interest of time, I will pass on to you guys. And uh, excuse me if I leave early. Thank uh, you. Definitely take it uh, offline again, Mahantaji. Uh, there are a lot of things we can do together. Thank you so uh, much. The next, question, uh, next question was really uh, how, how do companies in Mumbai or Delhi get involved? Uh, but let's take it offline, um, you know, on a one on one discussion because. Uh, there are over 400 companies working with Cassie, um, and most of the CEOs uh, are keen to promote entrepreneurship. So let's take it offline again uh, between you and me. Um, in the meantime, let's travel to another part of the world, um, you know, which is uh, Hayden. Uh, Hayden, welcome to the show, and uh, please tell us your angle. Yes, morning. And... Um... Commiserations. I know that India is, is going through a particularly challenging time and period now. So um, I hope everyone comes out of this at the other end healthy and and and, and survives. Um, in keeping with the, the the themes, startup ideas implementation, I was hoping to kind of share um, some information, um, high level information on. On, on business fundamentals, the fundamentals associated with starting a new business. But more importantly, to, to, to kind of share some of my thoughts on the major, one of the major challenges that startups face, certainly in my part of the world, is funding, patient funding, capital that will carry you, um, allow you to, to, to start it properly and to, and to fund you on an ongoing basis. So I, I have some thoughts on, on how um, we can kind of expand the options in terms of funding. And, um, and that is primarily what I, I would like to communicate this morning. Um, I don't know if I can share the screen now with my presentation or... Uh, Dr. Mitesh? Yes, I've given you the right side. Right. So I don't know if you're, everyone is seeing, seeing um, what I'm looking at here. This the presentation. Is everyone seeing the, the, the presentation? No, we are not able to see it yet. Um, is anyone able to see it now? No, no sir. Okay. All right. So let me let me go ahead without without um without um delaying things any any further. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I think one of the sort of ironic um outcomes of the current situation is that. It's sort of unlocked. Um, it, it has unlocked uh, certainly the the the, 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 um, the entrepreneurs within the, the, the in the Caribbean and in Trinidad in particular, um, because out of necessity, because because the traditional sort of 
um, channels no longer exist and so on. People have been very, very creative in terms of getting the customers. And in fact, using IT to, exp to, 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 to get a much broader base of customers than before. So that is, that is taking place and it's kind of dri driven additional investment in, 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 in non-carbon renewables, in, 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 in um, service solutions that maximize the use of technology. Um, of course, in the entertainment field, that, that it has driven that also. Um, notwithstanding that the fundamentals uh, uh, to, to, to setting up a business remain the same, um, you still have to be clear on the, on, the, on the business, what business you're in and what business you're not in. You have to be very careful about ownership and um, maintaining your ownership and controlling the shareholding. And so the business has to be constructed on that basis. Um, you have to be clear on what the product is and what the and what problem it solves. What's its what's your competitive advantage, um, and what's your pricing strategy? You have to do your your homework on the market. Um, do your analysis. Is the market growing? Is it in decline? Is it mature? Is it intensely price competitive? Um, because that would determine your approach to the market. And then, of course, you have to do your homework on the customer base. Um, you know, you know what, 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 what does it, what does your analysis say about that? And of course, in terms of your your com competition, um, you have to, you have to. Um, someone um, um, controlling my my. Uh, oh, doctors. Yeah, um, yeah, hey, then I have your slides up. So I've kind of moved on to the, 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 the next slide, actually. Um, um, you have to kind of develop your, your marketing strategies, how you promote. And of course, the important area of funding, you have to determine how much funding you need, when you need it, what type of funding you, you is most appropriate for your business. And of course, for you to raise the funding, for you to attract investors, for you to... Um, um, uh, the business properly, you have to do the hard work, with, with, which is the financial forecasting and so on, because um, you know that will drive your your ability to raise funding. All that said, you 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 have to conduct a, a pretty comprehensive risk assessment. You have to be aware of all the risks that that are associated with your business in the environment and how you will mitigate all of those risks. Um, so perhaps you can move on to the next two. Next to um, the next one. Um, so I come to the issue of the funding, funding, which is which is um, for many businesses in my part of the world the, the major challenge. And of course, you have a number of equities and a number of options in terms of funding. Um, of course, you can put in your own money, but of course, that's limited um, in terms of your own capability to raise funding. You can go to the bank. And in many instances, in this part of the world, it's faster, uh, and it may be cheaper than 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 than, than other options. But of course, banks are heavily regulated institutions, so that you, um, you at some stage will come up against the regulations as you kind of try to meet the, the financing needs of your business. And banks, by definition and by nature and properly, are inherently conservative institutions. So um, startups, entrepreneurs, and so on, uh, I would say that banks are not uh, the appropriate sort of first funding source for those sorts, sorts of operations, that banks are not set up to, to, to properly respond to the needs of those businesses. You can, dependent on, on, on the, the level of development of your market, you can go to venture capitalists or angel investors, they generally invest in businesses that they know and they are comfortable with so they can provide patient capital up to a point. But invest, venture capitalists and angel investors need to come out at some stage. Most of them have a five to 10 year horizon. So there's a finiteness about the, the funding from that source. And there's, the, of course, that, that limitation. And of course, you can go to the capital markets, um, deep market, um, you know, it, it, less restrictive than, 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 than um, traditional banking. You can opt for equity listing or for 
uh, issuing a, a, a publicly or privately issuing a bond. Um, but of course, in the traditional capital markets, the issue there is the cost associated with the um, issuing going out on the market, especially for small issues right now, it's just uh, too costly for, for, for small issues. And in, in, in my environment, a small issue would be 50 million and, and, and below. Um, when you measure the cost of, of going on onto the market, it really is just too expensive. And of course, um, once you decide to go public or you issue a security on the market, you um, have to meet constantly disclosure and filing requirements and so on, uh, and your reporting requirements. And those have costs attached to them. Um, you're kind of in a different league at that stage, so you have to ensure that you have the infrastructure within the company to meet those very, very rigid disclosure requirements. Um, so that's so that's the issue, uh, and perhaps the restriction associated with the capital markets option. Um, perhaps you can go on with the presentation. So I come to uh, uh, one of my sort of pet projects, which is. Um, in developing markets, can we work towards developing an, an SME bond exchange as, a, as an additional option? Um, SME bond exchange changes exist um, in, in many of the developing markets in, in Britain, in Europe, in the US. Um, they're supported um, to a lesser or greater extent by government um, um, activity and government support. Um, they're not as developed in the in the developing world as they should be, um, but I see that as, as one of the the options available. Um, generally, the, the the promoters of SME bond exchanges focus on focus on four sort of <coughs> aspects to, to kind of make it palatable for the SME market. One, of course, is for investors, you can invest smaller amounts, what I call bite-sized amounts. So you can invest a thousand dollars in a in a in a in a in a in a bond, and it can be a bond that is issued by several, a sort of mutual fund type bond that is issued by several issuers, and you have a so you, so so a small retail investor can can invest in, uh, an attractive yield and sort of manage the the risk through the through, through the consolidated fund and of course on the on the issuer side you can issue a smaller you can issue a small bond 20 million 15 million 10 million at acceptable cost so that sme or a group of smes you don't have to um you, you're not restricted in terms of the size of the of the of the uh of the issue that would make sense from a cost perspective generally um in in the markets that have issued uh, SME bond exchange, there's heavy, heavy use of financial technology to, to kind of maximize the ease of access and speed. So, so, so investors um, use technology to facilitate investments and issuers use technology to, to reach the markets. And of course, they, 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 um, there's heavy focus on reducing the cost to the, to the issuer. Um, so that so this thing makes sense economically. Um, so you and a lot of the costs um, in the capital markets on on issues relate to the number and a number of service providers that are involved in any issues. Lawyers, brokers, bankers, everyone has their fee um, that, that 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 goes into the pot. So it's really about managing that so that the cost of the of going to the market is reduced. So that it makes sense to an SME or a group of SMEs to go to the capital markets. So, uh, could you go on to the slide, please? So, in terms of the recommendations, I, I, um, in terms of market education, I, you know, there, there certainly is a requirement for a, 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 a well-developed and properly structured capital markets orientation education program. So it has to be targeted at the SMEs because there's not much knowledge in, in that in that kind of sphere. It has to be targeted at investors, regulators, and the service providers. 
So you have so so that is a sort of initial must that 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 that, that is required to, to go into the market. Of course, tax incentives are critical and important. This is where the government comes in. So there are tax incentives available for investors. Um, so they may, for instance, have benefit from zero rates on their investments and or, or tax allowances uh, or tax free income on their investments and their tax allowances for for issuers, um, so that the 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 income that they earn on uh, um, the, the income tax that they're liable to can be reduced as an incentive for them to to, to list in, in in the in the uh, in the in the exchange. Uh, of course, supporting the whole thing is an is a consultancy and service provider infrastructure, so that the so that you need that sort of infrastructure, that person, that consultant to hold the hands of the SME, the is the, the the investor, to ensure that they are ready and capable to go into the market, uh, that they meet the disclosure requirements and reporting requirements, that their, that their business is, is is properly structured so that they can. Um, properly go into the market and meet, meet those requirements. Um, the whole process of listing and disclosure and so on will uh, is is should be simplified so that you you kind of go through it, it, for for a typical capital markets issuer the whole disclosure and listing process is extremely complicated so you have to kind of simplify it um, decide on what you absolutely need and and do away with what you don't. So that the, so that um, the SME is not overwhelmed with the amount of information that is required, and you, the market gets precisely what it needs to make the investment decision. And of course, the whole process of speed is critical. So the listing and fundraising process has to be faster. Um, in, in 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 the local market, it takes six to eight months for, 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 for capital markets issue to go on the market. That's too long for an SME. So that has to be reduced significantly using financial technology. And of course, the whole cost um, process, as I said earlier, reducing the amount of service providers and getting a commitment from, from service providers that they will accept lower fees on, on transactions. And for the on the liquidity sense, because the, uh, the, 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 the whole the market will need liquidity you need to 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 to, to um, an active secondary market so that people can trade on the on the on the exchange and then and 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 the exchange grows on in that in that context. So uh, and you probably need a, a an underwriter, maybe a government agency, to 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 take them off in terms of liquidity. And to expand on the liquidity, I think the, the market should be open not only to nationals but to the international markets, international investors up to a point, and that would, would, would sort of assist in, in growing the market and in providing the required liquidity. So that basically is my presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I um, welcome questions or feedback. Thank you very much, Hedon, for that presentation. Um, in fact, uh, the good part is uh, I'm, I'm amazed to uh, look at your idea the ironical part is uh, my pet project is setting up an exchange uh, which i have been really working hard on and it took a seminar for both of us to realize that we are working on something very similar um so uh, yes that's, uh, you know you, you are a young country Trinidad tobago is a young country uh, republic 1976 um mainly focus is oil and gas uh, that is where the money comes from. The GDP is pretty high, $40,000 uh, purchase power parity per person. And uh, you are no longer classified as a developing economy. You are a developed economy being 40th out of the top 70 rich countries of the world. Um, so as a regulator, and um, you know, we, we always, um, for, the, for the benefit of the viewers, uh, Hayden is a regulator. He was the CEO of their uh, Securities Exchange Board. Um, so te tell us, Hayden, quickly, as a regulator, uh, what do you think um, a country like uh, Trinidad and Tobago or other islands in the Caribbean uh, should be doing to imbibe entrepreneurship among the youngsters? Yeah, so the major problem in terms of the region, and you kind of touched on it in your in your question, is is the 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 regulators, the harmonization of the regulations within the region. 
Uh, I think no, there, there's nothing that will encourage business development more and entrepreneurship more so than um, a businessman who wants to set up a business to um, to 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 attract trade among the seven to eight million dollar um, uh, population uh, million population of the Caribbean, being able to operate in each every jurisdiction using the same rules and regulations and so on that doesn't exist so i think the, the main the, one of the major challenges faced by the regulation and the regulatory um regulators across the region is harmonization of the regulation so that there's similarity and you know and and, and you can organize your business um knowing that 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 that, that the requirements are the same in each market um, I think a lot of work has to be done in that area. It's not, it's not an easy proposition, but that to me would be the major sort of um, imperative for, 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 for the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kiran. Uh, let's, let's have, uh, it's already eight o'clock, uh, but it was a very interesting discussion. I'm sure one of our viewers, uh, Amrish also has a lot of questions on the bond markets, but we can take it offline. Uh, with Hayden, uh, can can we have um, Amar's opinion? What what's your angle on uh, startups and entrepreneurship? Uh, you are mute. You are mute, Amar. Yeah. So thank you, Paresh, for the warm welcome and for inviting me to the conference. And uh, I'm glad to be here today and speaking to all of you. I hope all of you are keeping safe as we are as we are passing through a very interesting times. So I'll just, uh, I have just prepared some slides, which I would like to just present. And uh, so, so after a very insightful session by Hayden, I would just like to add my two cents to the topic of today. Uh, so before I start, this is a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I'm currently serving as the Associate Director of Growth for Elara Group, which comprises of Housing.com, PropTiger, and Makan. Housing being our most popular brand. Uh, prior to it, I was a co-founding member at FastFox.com, a home rental tech startup, which got acquired by Elara Group at about 1 billion valuation. Apart from that, I have keen interest in politics and had led the campaign for my home state, acting as the political advisor to an union minister in the 2019 general elections. My other uh, previous corporate engagements include uh, working with ICICI Bank, Tata Technologies, and Daikin. So this was a brief about me. Now coming to the topic of today, uh, for the next eight to 10 minutes, I'll just brush, brush you through some of the key aspects involved in graduating an idea to implementation stage in a startup. So carrying out a thorough market potential estimate is the first and foremost thing which you need to do before you in fully invest your time and energy in executing your idea. And one of the key aspects to take into consideration while estimating the marketing put market potential is the current online demand, which one can get an idea from the search volumes of relevant keywords. You need to also factor in the year and year growth potential for the market segment you are venturing into and also look around worldwide if there are any similar other firm building something in similar lines. You can take some ideas from them for inspiration and adopt some of the best practices. Further, what you can do is that you can test the product market fit by building a MVP, which is a minimum viable product and circulating it among your potential user segment for feedback. All this has to be done before you launch yourself full physically to work on your idea. So the basic question that you need to ask is, are you able to add any value to your customer or not? If you feel you are, able to add some value to the people or customers and they don't have a similar kind of such an offering currently, then, then you should go and launch yourself full fledgedly to the idea that you are working on. The next important aspect I will just touch down upon is building a solid core team. So if you have an A plus team with right mix of dynamic go-getter set of youth and experience who are willing to lead from the front, then you can expect half of the battle to be won. It is, a most, it is most important to get people with complementary skill sets within the team, give them ownership and trust them to get the job done for you. 
uh, granting them e shops, providing them with professional leadership coaching, and investing in them can really groom them to be future leaders. So I'll be just really quick with my slides in the interest of time. Uh, so next, next I would like to also highlight the key organizational virtue that forms the foundation for building a successful organization from scratch. The competitive market that we are in today with a lot of high potential startups blooming up, it has become really imperative for businesses to be on their toes. So as they say, early bird catches the prey. It's a similar situation in startup world as well, where the prey is basically finding out incubation. Survival of the fittest rule applies here as well. Unless you react and respond by building up a reactive organizational culture, you are surely going to miss the bus. So once you have a reactive culture in the organizational core DNA, it flows within the organization. And this will ensure there are no bottlenecks created due to laggardness of any specific individual with respect to execution of tasks. Slow responsive attitude can quite easily disseminate in the entire organization, leading to it uh, drag, dragging along at a snail, snail pace. So if every employee possesses the DNA which says movement is now and there is no tomorrow, then there is nothing stopping the organization or the employee from the fast track growth curve. So coming to the next aspect, which Sumit was also talking about in the in the in the uh, in the starting of the conversation, uh, the, 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 the single word to some what Sumit said was growth hacking. So growth hacking in startup startups is really critical and essential. So in the cutthroat competitive market that we're in today with myriad startups blooming up in every space, it is imperative that one achieves exponential growth to stand apart from the crowd and march ahead. Growth hacking is also necessary to set the playbook for successfully achieving any specific task or to solve any specific problem. So uh, once, once, you, once you set the playbook to solve a particular problem, you can then delegate it to people so that it can be replicated within the organization. Delegation of the playbook is necessary so that you can move ahead with the next problem, which requires a particular challenge once you have figured out the best solution or way to solve it. Not only in startups, but even, uh, but even bigger organizations need to have a growth team in place to ensure that the wheel of innovation keeps turning. Often the problem when organizations grow big is that they get so engrossed in existing businesses that they tend to ignore about the future. This risks the problem of getting obsolete if you do not keep pace with time. So once you have taken all the efforts to get a superior product ready with, a excellent, uh, with an excellent value proposition, the next step is to communicate the offering and bring it to the attention of masses and subsequently convert them as your customers. I want to draw your attention towards a very essential framework which forms the base for all your efforts. The R funnel framework, whose components are acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and then revenue. It's a stepwise process where we start with investing our efforts towards acquiring the users and finally convert them as extremely satisfied or paid customers. Now let's imagine that we have done all the hard work in the right way to power your startup to a certain level. Now, now you need fresh capital to scale your startup further and take it to multi-billion valuation level, unless and until you are determined and intend to remain bootstrapped. Remaining bootstrapped is the best possible thing that you need to, uh, you, that, that can happen for any entrepreneur as they do not need to dilute their equity. But for all practical purposes, for giving shape to your vision and building an unicorn, most of the startup founders do seek out VC funded capital. So you have to compete with thousands of founders like you who are actively chasing out VCs. So what you need to actually stand apart of the crowd with a superior product. Your product should be the game changer to help you outcompete all your competitors around. Apart from a superior product, you need to have a compelling story of your startup journey. Your story needs to be ably supported by growth metrics. Numbers are really critical to back your story. Do you use the power of uh, media to propagate your story to the world? Do you use, do some PR, say some articles on social media? You can jot down some blog articles and you need to do it consistently for some time. Once you have all the checklists in place, you can expect some inbound queries and interest from VC circuit. 
ideally you should not be chasing them but it should be the the way round and once it starts happening you are well on your way to multiply your startup valuations so that was in summary and in very uh, short time period uh, basically my take on the topic and theme of today and uh, i will be happy to take any questions if any over to you parish <clears throat> thank you amar for that crisp uh, you know and clear presentation the most interesting line uh, was that you don't have to chase vcs but the vcs will come to you uh, and <laughs> that's the ideal way now and yes that is in an ideal world uh, tell something since you represent ilara um, you know you guys uh, ilara avendas uh, sequoia kalari uh do you really go and chase after entrepreneurs uh or sometimes you know or not really so pardon if you can just repeat the question i i think uh, due to the internet connectivity i just lost so do, the question do, do you uh do you really uh do you really chase after entrepreneurs so has it happened uh, before that you have been so we we chasing vcs that that's what you are asking right no no uh, yeah, you are a fund uh, okay. so do you uh, do you chase entrepreneurs are, are you keenly looking out are you actively looking out for entrepreneurs so basically see uh, so so we, we uh, for from the aspect of any vc fund funding or uh, whatever any, any organization vc funded and organization so they 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 actually keep a track of all the innovations that are happening uh, in the VC, uh, in the in the entrepreneurial circuit and who is basically uh, which stage they keep a track of everything like which which startup is basically uh, witnessing a good amount of decent growth and which which founder is there in the basically who who is uh, kind of active on the uh, circuit so is active on the social media platforms so they keep a track of everything and then uh, many times they can, they basically you receive inbound queries from the vc vc circuit where they kind of gently inquire you ki kya chal raha hai what is what is uh, the product that you are building uh, not only basically they the the, the, the uh, intention cannot uh, is not in all of the times ki actively we want to fund you but we want to keep a track on you and see your overall progress and maybe let's we can reconnect up to 5 6 months and if both the basically if both the interest that kind of marries then then we can basically uh, look for uh, investing in our startup so that that's the way it usually happens that immediately koi aake bol nahi deta ki i want to fund fund your startup they keep a track of all the startups that are doing pretty well whose idea who, who are basically innovating something but out there with a disruptive idea and eventually they keep track of kya chal raha hai or uh, they also put in that uh, queries like uh, basically they 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 pose as customers put in uh, uh, sign into our app or product see the overall experience what is the, uh, uh, the, the how how is the customer journey like uske baad it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of time yeah, matlab yeah. yeah. so no, i hear you i hear you it's a journey um you know of course we have more questions for you uh, given my background in banking um i have been an investment banker for the major part of my life um so yes let's let's take it offline um, i have received um two uh, whatsapp messages that they want to talk to you uh, let's let's take it offline again uh, over to you sumneet before we go to uh, miss nayar on the legal side uh, sumneet ji please tell us your angle on entrepreneurship we have a hard finish at 8:30 uh, sure. so you get 5 minutes rohini ji gets 5 minutes and then we have 5 7 minutes for questions uh amrish is all set with the questions so uh, amrish is a old friend he is a very senior innovation banker uh he was the ceo of an innovation bank he was the ceo of a wealth management company uh so welcome amrish to um, the call and yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for it it's been very very interesting although i joined a bit late i have found it really interesting no no th- um, thank you for joining us uh, sumnit ji please tell us your angle and then we go to rohini ji and harris sir with a lot of legal questions Good evening, everybody, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mitesh and Dr. Padesh, uh, for giving me this platform to share some of my experiences. So I thought, rather than share some uh, points about how to do things, I would uh, share a small story about our journey. 
so ybb hotels private limited are companies basically a hospitality and a co-working aggregate uh, which has been around a year and a half old and uh, post founding uh, you know midway through our journey the pandemic came and hit our hospitality in the hospitality industry hard and real fast and uh, we were uh, facing and we we are still facing the challenge of driving revenue and trying to work out uh, newer ways in terms of innovation and uh, maybe ideating some product so that we can uh, you know survive so what happened is uh, around last year 2020 uh, around august uh, team ybb myself my partners uh, my co-founders we started working on a key program uh, called uh, Operation Mercy. So um, I just want to uh, share the screen for a minute or so. Yeah, can you see my screen? Ah, yes. Yeah, I'll just uh, play a small PPT and I'll just tell you about it. Okay, um, so the thing is that uh, what happened is that we started uh, working around a particular program and a particular campaign which was ideated by our team. Uh, wherein what we would do is we would mobilize all our uh, partner properties around on a, on a pan-Indian basis for a mass immunization program. Because at that point of time, we began to think futuristic and we began to ideate a situation possibly that a preventive cure is not very far uh, at hand uh, from the pharmaceutical uh, companies and the uh, vaccine manufacturing companies. And we began to, uh, you know, um, just a second. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. So we began working very closely with some pharma majors and we are working, uh, you know, even uh, with them right now in tandem, possibly in the upcoming uh, quarter, we should be launching our program wherein we use uh, the current situation. We use the current situation as a leverage to, you know, push for our revenue to push uh, to also give back something to the society to give a good service. So uh, I wanted to highlight this as an, uh, you know, a way where we used our lateral thinking and are using our skills to survive during this pandemic, wherein many of our count counterparts in the market uh, are finding it very, uh, very hard to survive in the pandemic by, for in terms of driving revenue, because so far they had been having a, mostly a one track mind in terms of, uh, you know, uh, running the market. But uh, we put in around uh, two quarters of work and uh, eventually we came out with this process and with this program. So um, this is what I wanted to share. I think that for a startup to survive, uh, a person should be ready to ideate and should be on his toes uh, at any given point of time to uh, face any kind of challenge. Because today, a lot of businesses, which whether they are online 
or whether they are offline or whether they are on ground businesses people or businesses which do not have uh, you know uh, online interface they are very much challenged so we should always look for different kind of avenues or should look to collaborate uh, with any other uh, possible avenues to generate revenue so um, that's about it uh, from my end in very short so if you have any questions uh, then uh, you can ask sure that that was interesting i understand that you are using the hotels network um, to promote uh, vaccination right. Yes, yeah, it's an interesting idea. Um, yes. Yeah, if anybody has a question, I don't have a question. I have a business proposition, so I will, <laughs> I'll speak to thirty minutes from now. I want to, I want to take a minute more. So yeah, uh, I have since time is very less. I have just given you a very brief snapshot. But Operation Mercy happens to be a, absolutely a three sixty degree proposal where we have partnered with a number of partners, starting from insurance to mobility to. uh you know companies uh, who are uh, providing the vaccine the pharma companies as well as uh the companies who would carry out the vaccination for example uh, immunization partners diagnostic partners people who would provide the staff and uh, qualified phlebotomologists who would uh, do that and uh, one of the reason why our proposal is being considered very closely and as on on the final leg of things is because um it's a very pnl friendly and a business margin friendly uh, solution for the company as well because for example normally a pharma company has to shell out anything between 30 40 45% 50% 60% percent on any given product to uh, you know fund the supply chain or to fund the uh, commissions and so on and so forth in terms of distribution but here in we are creating a very bare and a lean model that okay this is a hotel come in we'll carry out the program for you we'll handle the registrations for you you pay for the facility and we we will uh, maybe take a very minuscule uh, percentage uh, per shot of the vaccine as a revenue so uh, this is one of the reasons so uh, no matter how well we ideate and how much of our lateral thinking we use our businesses should be very investor friendly should be very business friendly should be very pnl friendly and uh, should be very uh, should be able to survive in the long run of things and scalable as well so then we can survive yes perfect perfect thank you very much sumit uh, with that we come to uh, our last and uh, uh, last speaker for the day rohini ji um welcome to the seminar we have a lot of queries on uh, legal uh, but before that please tell us your angle on um, entrepreneurship Uh, you are on mute yeah. sorry thank you thank you parish so it was nice uh, listening to my other co speakers uh, see from a i know at amb legal at our firm we have a startup cell whom we where we cater to a lot of startups across sectors and what we have seen uh, widely is that everybody wants funding you know they start they have a brilliant idea they they wear on their entrepreneurial hat and they want to do business they want to commercialize their product their idea and generate revenue okay but what happens eventually is they are literally focused on business but they they, they are not legally compliant i know because that because any legal compliance that you're looking at in, in involves cost and at that time you have a liquidity crunch and you don't really want to get into that but unfortunately what happens is when it's time to actually get funding and want to uh, you know want to pitch into the investor and when they carry out a diligence more often than not we have seen that these non compliances tend to be a major obstacle at the time of funding you tend to lose out on the valuation probably your investor loses interest you lose out on the deal so very often what i tell my startup guys is that you know you need to be legally compliant firstly if you have an idea in mind and you want to do business first thing is what is the kind of entity you want to set up is it a sole proprietorship is it a partnership firm or is it a llp or a company or a opc what are we looking at here it now how do you select the kind of entity that through which you can do business it is the objective that you have in mind are you intending to go bootstrap if you are then you don't need to do a company you can just go ahead with a opc 
because you're going to be putting your own money again if you actually increase some turnover thresholds then it you need to convert your opc into a company next next in line is you need to look at what is the government incentives in place for startups more often than not i have seen startups tend to not take the msme registration they don't take up the dpiit registration and even if they do they don't realize the benefits that these incentive schemes offer you need to be mindful you need to be aware of these schemes because you are a startup and you need to make the best out of what the governments come out with like uh, mr mahanta ji said no he they have come up with a lot of schemes in gujarat startups need to be aware of it they need to read up they need to be well aware of what's there in the market thereafter the basic licenses that you require be the shops and establishment gst pan tan you need to have that in place incurs cost it involves cost but you need to do it so as to uh, carry out your operations smoothly okay because for for to be able to uh, grow and sustain you need to be legally compliant thereafter your business specific licenses if you're a pharma company if you're into r&d your drugs and cosmetic uh, act applies if you are into manufacturing some kind of uh, uh, eatables then the fasai legal methodology is applicable so it's not just about doing business it's about doing business uh, being legally compliant right is a must so that tomorrow there's nobody else copying it you need to have vendor contracts you need to have service contracts where your where your liability exposure is limited because tomorrow when the investor comes in he doesn't really want to look at a uh, agreement which you have signed up and where there is unlimited liability exposure because what can happen tomorrow is when there is a claim that comes in it was the investor's money which is at stake why would they want that and at that time what happens is when you are signing up the investment document when they carry out the diligence all this becomes a cpcs a condition precedent to the investment document so you really want money but you don't get it because the investor has some conditions for you so all of this is some because we have been uh, you know on the other side of the table where we represent investors we know how investors look at these things hence we try and advise our startups to be looking into the space as well apart from that if you are looking at funding what is the kind of funding you're looking at which is the approach that you that you're taking so for example earlier you know uh, up till up till off late you, know, you had this ssa ssg that you need to execute you need to have uh, valuations because the companies that calls for it you need to do a lot of compliances now for example you know uh, something like an 100x vc it it has come up with i save it's basically what y combinator did there in the us they have tried replicating it in india the startups need to be aware of the concept of i save where you can actually get money without a valuation because you're not doing a price round you could you, you can just get money into the company without doing a valuation and then when you do a price round that particular security which is the i save gets converted into another security at the price round so this these are these are some things that the startups need to be aware of so you need to be you need to be aware of what's in the market apart from that like mahanta ji said no these incubation accelerators they really help because these guys have accelerator they have these mentors on board like we are mentors on a couple of uh, uh, you know incubator cells and we know how to operate because you no know, as and when they need any kind of help any kind of infrastructural support you no know, they they actually reach out to the to the concerned expert and they get them on board and try and see to it that the startup gets the required assistance apart from this you know you have to you have to look out to the market what is the kind of funding available what what, what are you reaching out for so you would actually go to an fnf you probably uh, go to angel investors vc now when you are taking money from the fnf you would not want to give them all the rights you know so you need to like commercially think as to what you should give into and what you should not these are the basic things that i think startups should look at and also it is very from a legal point of view if i could say you need to identify the legal risk 
you need to leverage the law to your advantage you know i'm 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 talking from a startup's perspective you need to identify the legal risk you need to assess and thereafter do whatever is required to be done to mitigate that risk reach out to the concerned uh, experts for any kind of assistance be it financial be it legal be it any kind of other assistance it's very important to be uh, structured from day one involves cost yes but if you try non compliance trust me it's way expensive than what compliance can be i always tell my startups this so i think i will i wind up on that and i don't have, i don't want to take too much time but i'm happy to take questions thank you rohini ji a couple of questions uh, yes. yes i i have a bigger question but before that a quick question uh, can you value uh, can you do a valuation for a one person company and uh, is that possible legally or financially in india but 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 we're doing what but what do you want to do what is the valuation for no no if i start a one person company and let's say i start um, no, but anything, valuation an would be for, no but valuation no no valuation would be for something you can't you can't get an investment from investor, third party for investor no you for can't investor. get an investment no opc is a one person company so it can only have one shareholder correct so when i have a opc and uh, let's say my company is valued at a uh, million dollars uh yes. they say okay the valuation is million dollars but technically you cannot invest in an opc so uh, can we convert it into a private yes. limited or an llp yes. or a limited yes so there are getting valuation yes so i have, so we've done this quite a few times and it's let me tell you it's not a good thing to go to because if you have a one person company the conversion process from a opc to a private limited company because the investor cannot invest into opc it can only invest into a proper private limited company the right. process is very lengthy so the idea being that if you are intending to get in third party funds at some point in time opc is not a good deal to go because setting up a private limited company is way simpler than actually Uh, uh, converting a OPC to a private limited company. I'm talking from a practical point of view. Legally, yes, you can convert. To answer okay. your question. Now, my another question, uh, or rather, next question is: See, we 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 talk to a lot of law firms, and uh, I have been an investor. I have been an entrepreneur. I have invested in law companies. Uh, I had some very decent exits. Um, you know, I in fact, I sold one company to a BSC listed company. So that was a great exit for us. uh so we we have been in the investing world i have invested in uh, in incubator um an accelerator and uh, you know so on and so forth uh, and every legal firm tells us that yes we do pro bono uh, we reach out to entrepreneurs and all uh, but really it's not happening it's not happening uh, you know i have a million students um, and a pretty large percentage of them want to be entrepreneurs uh but none of them really have any idea and we we are at our wits end we are not able to help them uh, with simple things like franchising agreements or uh, copyrights or ip uh, technology uh, anything anything uh, a simple uh, shareholders agreement um you know so how, how does one uh, reach out to lawyers uh given that um, you know reaching out to lawyers is uh, not a very easy thing to do um you know uh, you you it's like going to a dentist you are always afraid you know <laughs> so when you go to a lawyer's office uh, you don't really find uh, people smiling at you you know it, it, it is difficult and i speak this from experience so how how does a child in jalgaon or solapur or kolapur um you know uh, bounce off an idea of a lawyer how 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 does that happen so that's where uh, you know like i said there are these incubation centers they are really mm-hmm. helpful in terms of you know any kind of because see what happens is uh, in other startup you would not really have the capacity to take an office on rent you would probably not have the the uh, the bandwidth to to probably uh, you know have some sort of uh, things in place where you can carry out operations that's where these incubation cells uh, really come into play however uh, you know let me tell you that at least our law firm has a startup cell and we do uh, our, our share of uh, pro bono matters see what happens is you know a, a, no law firm is out there as an ngo right so they have their share of doing pro bono matters so do we 
Correct. So Correct. we do Correct. our set of pro bono matters. And in fact, what we do, I'll tell you, uh, Pareshji, that what we do is we actually have some sort of engagements with startups where we say, okay, fine, you know, initially we'll try and work out, you know, we'll try and uh, advise you. And thereafter, we probably look at a longer engagement. With that, what happens is because we take out such so much time to understand their business model, and you know we 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 kind of advise them accordingly. So it becomes easier to develop a rapport with them, and then in the longer run, it works for both of us. Right, absolutely, so absolutely. It's, so, it's, it's, so, it's, so it's just about reaching out to the right set of people, if I can say. But there are uh, law firms who do pro bono matters. So reaching out to a lawyer is not a problem. The problem is it's expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's exactly why I said, you no, know, these uh, incubation centers and similar centers have these uh, mentors on board, you know. Uh, mm. In fact, something like a, the, 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 the startup innovation hub, which Mahantaji is a part of, they also could be having an expert panel, panels where, you know, you can have mentors and they, they, you know, you can reach out to the right set of people and get some advice. Because see, so, uh, we uh, all understand startups require complete handholding, honestly, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it doesn't really become, so what they do is I'll tell you what I, in my experience, they just come up with a draft from an online Google, koi doc liya, they give it to us and say, you review it for us, you know, that, so it will be less, less expensive for them. We also mm. take that up, honestly. I mean, that's not really preferred, but we do that because we understand that it's expensive for them. You know, but what we try and do, Parishji at our end, is that we don't really make them dependent on us. We try and take them through the entire contract, take them through the entire transaction and explain them what all they need to identify and understand what are they signing up to. The, the issue is that startups just intending to do business, wanting to just generate revenue, they sign up on whatever comes their way. Unfortunately, that is what puts them in deep trouble. And that's what so we my try. last question to you is, uh, you know, before we accept one or two questions from the audience, is, um, you know, my last question to you is based on all the WhatsApp that I just received, uh, because these sessions are going live on YouTube. Um, so we, we get a lot of WhatsApp um, queries, you know. So the last question is, uh, uh, the, there, are, there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there, uh, not, not startups, entrepreneurs, yeah, yes. who are making money. Uh, who have problems with intellectual property, uh, um, IPR, yes. patent, uh, franchising agreements, and franchising licensing, okay. uh, insurance, um, liability insurance, and a lot of other things. So, do, mm -hmm. do you have a textbook uh, sort of, you know, textbook for dummies, textbook for starters, um, anything like that, which you can help us, um, you know, that this is 101. Um, and if you need help, then this is. Uh, how you take it forward and you know do, do you have a textbook for dummies is is that um, available or possible yeah i'll i'll tell you uh, you know there are so many uh, youtube videos and there are so many uh, modules available online so many articles mm -hmm. blogs available online that you can read upon but as a as a legal consultant all i can say is that it's not one size fits all so even <laughs> if there was something in place it could one one particular uh, pattern could work for a particular transaction, but that same formula cannot apply to another transaction. So I I, I don't know if I can tell you a particular website that you can go to where there is something uh, some data available that you can refer to all the time. No worries, thank you. It was a uh, super interesting session uh, with everyone. We have one one and a half minute to go uh, before the hard finish. If anybody has a query question. Comment, uh, please, please tell us. Uh, Amrish ji, Dr. Moses, Amar, any questions, please? So, I mean, I, I just had some points to make because, uh, I mean, what stood out for me, what uh, Mahantar ji said, I mean, that one thought of his which stood out was creating a market. Because uh, those who try to mentor startups provide various inputs, but to create a market where the startups can generate revenue, I think that takes care of the biggest issue, which uh, normally these startups face. The other thing uh, about what uh, Mr. Hayden was uh, discussing on the exchange, I think exchange really is the most, uh, one of the most important components of uh, uh, startup funding. Though we, I mean, uh, we have had, uh, uh, I mean, we have options for startups uh, as far as the ones which have been funded by institutions. 
but for others i don't think there's any option as such but then if you go back to the 1980s and 1990s i mean clearly the ipo market was a startup market because most of the ipos which are coming were actually for greenfield projects and uh, we used to get tax relief for investing in those uh, ipos at, at that point of time so if people are in the 80s and 90s they were expected to be well informed to invest in those ipos then i think today clearly we are much better informed so i think it should be i mean there should be a platform like that to be opened up for the general public and uh, clearly what uh, uh, ms nayar uh, spoke about right now i think the most ignored thing with the startups is clearly legal and compliance because uh, uh, clearly it's, it's because of the cost because most of these are bootstrap but then i think it, that i'm um, this works out to be the most expensive issue in the longer run if they ignore legal and compliance so i think uh, they i mean uh, you could actually think of some sort of a package for these startups for the first one or two years which which looks decently cheap but then at the same time it is a win win for both correct correct absolutely absolutely thank you very much uh, amrish it has become a recent uh, business practice even for large companies like amazon uh, to do some pro bono and uh, you know basically basically uh, catch them young and watch them grow so uh, you know you catch a 100 uh, small companies and two of them become big uh, you make up for the lost revenues um, you know so yes yes that is what we do uh my final question to everybody in general before we do a hard finish really is um and this is something that my students have been struggling with uh today um you you open google you open facebook linkedin any any social media you find 1 million mentors everybody is a mentor for startup you know in fact everybody and his uncle is also a mentor for the startups right so uh while while uh, we we do a lot of sessions on what to do you know uh, we really need uh, an argument on what to avoid what not to do what is the kind of mentor you do not want what is the kind of mentor you want uh, how, what are the three things that you should look at in a mentor and uh, you know if uh, just three things that you look in a mentor uh, amrish do you have a comment amrish amar do you have a comment on this the first and foremost thing that uh, i think one should look while adopting a mentor is the past track record uh, so so how successful they have successful or beat unsuccessful as well so what is their past record in terms of building up a team together and uh, uh, taking the startup to a certain level uh, so so acquisitions or being listed in a ipo doesn't uh, every time materialize right but if you have scaled your startup to a certain level and then then you you, might, you can be trusted as a very good uh, advisor in terms of experience and uh, uh, getting to know all the uh, no technical as well as non technical know how in terms of how to build the startup from scratch to a certain level so that is one thing that i will uh, really like to look into a mentor in terms of ki kya hai unka what is the past track record and uh, apart from that uh, So, so anyone, anyone, one uh, else wants to pitch in with other two? Well, I have something to add there. You know, before you, before you uh, ask, what has the mentor to offer? It's very important for a startup to actually ask themselves the question first: What is that they're expecting from the mentor? You see, because you can't go to you, you can't go to a dentist and ask a question for an ortho. So you need to know that which, which is the mentor you're going to, and what are you expecting from them? because see no mentor is going to misguide you so you know that's not their intention nobody would have that misintent but you need to know what are you seeking from them and accordingly i think you'll get the right set of answer and that's something that my absolutely is. correct absolutely correct if you don't know what you want you never get it Parish, absolutely uh, can i put in my uh, small views yes, please uh, mujhe bhi please you have been training more than 5000 students per year for the last 20 years Uh, we would really want to have your opinion. Like my, my opinion uh, of the last several years is yes, the government and everybody, even if the universities and the UGC has been uh, for the startups, or uh, at least uh, they have lot of notices, they have lot of uh, circulars to encourage startups. But uh, my personal experience is there is a huge uh, gap or a huge valley to be bridged between uh, these circulars and what is actually happening. Uh, in the college in the, in the educational institutes where we really want the startups to bloom 
that that there is a very huge uh, value to be bridged and that is something i look upon uh, people like you to do it uh, students really uh, still the mentality is they come for education they take their degrees and and the startup point remains on paper very very few colleges or at least we do a program once a year fine twice a year but that doesn't have the necessary impact what we are planning at if we want to do it we need to concentrate more on each and every college and we need a dedicated let us say a, a faculty suppose suppose today i say yes let us do it and then every every student will start you know whatsapping me uh, sir now abhi kya karte hai iske aage and that again will be a problem because uh, we cannot physically deal with so many thousands of students so we need someone a mentor as we say who who can guide them really who can who can uh, you know earmark or choose those who are really interested and then move ahead with them the government circular also says that the the alumni association should provide seed money but actually in in fact that is not happening in reality it is not happening so so we need to work more on this i really look forward to you and we can we can start working together i yeah. i offer i offer uh, our offices my offices you can always <laughs> come and, and we can start on the campus for the campus we can start a startup uh, activity Yes, yes. Welcome. No, my, my my mistake. I have been, um, you know, somewhat lax in visiting your campus. The last time I did, ah, uh, this time I could not. I could see the, <laughs> I could sense the underlying team. Ah, uh, but yes, you are right. This is the right forum to bring out. Uh, Amrish is a very close friend for the last fifteen twenty years now. Um, he is a mentor to startups and very senior companies also, not only to startups. Um, so yes, we can, uh, you know, rope in Amrish, uh, Rohini ji, Sumneet. Uh, Amar and a lot of uh, patrons at Kasi uh, to do this. Thank you very much. This has been one of the most interesting um, and longer sessions. We usually have a hard cut off at eight thirty. Uh, it's eight forty seven, and all the speakers are going strong. I'm sure it is as interesting uh, for all of us that it, it is for me. Uh, special thanks to Bhanda Ji, Hayden, uh, Rohini Ji, Sumit. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much, Mozesi. Yeah. Pratishalam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.